So yesterday was pretty fun. We had one of our crop guys who's been consulting for us for quite some time. He sells us fertilizer and then comes out and looks at the crop. And I was going out with him and looking at the wheat. And so as we were scouting, uh, we were looking down here um, and seeing uh, what we could see. And so this is the first year that I haven't put any um, fungal uh, seed dressing and actually haven't done any fungicides. Now, over the last six years, um, I've done more and more expensive fungal programs, um, spending thousands and thousands of dollars on crop protection. And, you know, we got good control and um, Septoria was well controlled. That's our main one, also some tan spot. And, um, but we always had some. It didn't matter if I was doing a, you know, a, a base um, seed dressing and then T0, T1, T2. Uh, and even I did one year, I think almost five sprays of fungicide. And we always had some uh, visible um, issue with Septoria. And this year, um, my crop scouter is saying, I can't find anything, not even in the pivot tracks where the water splashes, where you would always find some, um, can we find anything? And there's zero fungicide, zero pesticide, zero um, seed dressing used, except for biological stuff. Uh, we got some rise pea, and we also used some um, lactobacillus that we created on the farm, as well as some um, uh, Johnson Sioux uh, compost that we used. And so you can see here, if you look down inside the crop, there's some pale leaves where they've been shadowed out, uh, shaded out, but you're not seeing um, the, the fungal pressure. And you can go all through the field and you can pull up the leaves and you don't find the window painting. Um, really, really exciting to finally make a breakthrough on that and, and to see that. So yeah, it's too early to tell. Obviously it's not harvest um, to be able to look at it. And you know, you could have something come up still in the crop, but never in seven years, no matter how many thousands of dollars I've spent on crop protection, have I had a clean, completely clean crop at this stage. And so really, really excited, really excited to see the beneficials all throughout the field um, and, and just see that progress. And it's been really exciting to do that. Uh, haven't used any growth regulants this year because we've been able to uh, balance our nitrogen and carbon um, uh, where we've been putting it down. We've also spread it out a bit. And um, right now we're about 160 kgs of urea less than we did last year at this time and it looks great even the guys selling me fertilizer were like yeah you know you could put a little extra down just in case for protein but they can't see any deficiency whatsoever and that is super super exciting i think today might be one of the most exciting days since i've been um growing uh, crops here in zambia so um today i get to do something really really cool and that is um, after looking through our wheat and seeing um, what we actually needed um, after making changes to some biological systems and controls and changing how we handle our, our N applications um, and adding carbon and using lactobacillus and saving our own seed, doing our own biological seed dressings um, and seeing a completely, completely clean crop. Um, I am super stoked to be able to start sending back a whole bunch of um, chemistry that I don't need for crop protection um, because I don't need it. And so, you know, after um, years and years and years of, of buying thousands and thousands of dollars of this stuff, I'm getting ready to send it back and I'm getting back in exchange um, crop nutrition, stuff that's going to make stuff live. And so, yeah, it's a bit of an Independence Day for us here um, for the first time ever to be able to send back all that chemistry and get back um, either biological or plant feeding nutrition products. Um, pretty, pretty stoked, pretty stoked. So I think one of the most exciting things too is it's not like we've been cutting costs on chemistry to protect our wheat. We've been throwing the whole um, gamut at it. You can see we haven't been cutting costs on the products we use for crop protection. You can see here um, the, the chemistry we've been using. We've been using the growth regulants. We've been using the multiple fungicides. Um, we've been using, you know, top, top tier um, seed dressings. 
And the truth is we were not getting control like we've gotten with simple biology. And yeah, we bought a little bit of biological product, but most of what we used is not something that you buy um, and you're able to produce um, either on farm or with very uh, inexpensive ingredients. And so that's super exciting. Um, really, really liberating to know that we can do something at a price that's affordable and actually has better control. And so today I got to trade in all that poison for things like mainstay, for things like intrafert, zinc products, micros, things like fulvic acids, um, things like the Cosmocell Tropocell products. We're able to use those things um, instead of the, the poisons I spent uh, a lot of money for. Maybe one of the most interesting things was as I was going through today, looking at a lot of the chemistry that I can't send back. And I was like, man, I spent all that money and you know, next year I was gonna use it on my soybeans or the next year I was gonna use it on wheat. And I realized I'm never gonna be able to use it. Um, it dawned on me, why are you feeling bad about that? Okay, you spent the money and you didn't use the, 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 the chemistry, but you're getting to not put poison down ever again for those kind of products, to not ever again have to use a fungicide because we found a solution where we've had clean soybeans in the rainiest year in seven years and now perfectly clean wheat. Um, really, really excited to not have to be on that um, train anymore and to have gotten off. So we're about to start planting wheat. This is our first year we're using um, clean seed, but from on farm. And then over here we've got um, lactobacillus and some wood vinegar. We're also putting in some of this uh, Lalamond rice pea, just a little bit. And we're going to be putting in about 400 grams of Johnson Sioux compost. Here's the LAB wood vinegar and the Johnson soup. We're about to add the rice pea and then we'll give it a shot. So? Now we're putting the rice pea in. There we go, getting it all mixed up. Check out that beautiful young wheat. Take a look here and see all the rhizosheaths in there. Okay, you can see here our high carbon blend, or soil based blend that we're doing. Um, what we've got in here is some LAB lactobacillus, we've got activated carbon, some other carbon sources, we also have fish hydrolysis. So we're going to be putting this on. It should help us in dealing with some of the aftermath of the, the high nitrogen that we're needed in uh, the process of growing wheat. Here we are. Um, this is our current brewing tank. And you can look down inside. All kinds of good stuff about to go on to the wheat. Get injected tonight with a dosing pump piston pump and you can see we've got vermicast tea, we've got IMO uh, tea, and all kinds of other goodies to pack along as they say microbes with lunch pails.